As you may notice, there is no chat on screen today. That is very much intentional, as uh, before the album has even come out, um, people are terrified that I'm gonna basically destroy this thing and ruin everybody's positive perception about it. As you can see by this, this is basically the majority of what I've seen. Brad, please don't send your army of goons to review bomb this. It actually isn't that bad of an album. Uh, made, of course, by an account with two ratings, one of which is Drake giving it a zero and this giving it a hundred. But that's, you know, that's, that's basically the majority of what I've seen from this album so far. The other reason I don't want to show the chat is because apparently having a sense of community means that if I show you guys that it currently has a 65, which is by far the highest score any AJR album has ever had, then that means that I am inciting you guys to go negatively review it without even listening to it or making your own opinion about it, which is extremely brain-dead to assume. But of course, people will assume it anyways, so what's the point? I'm showing it because I use this website and I actually do care whether or not things have a arbitrary number attached to them because I find it to be interesting for categorization and whatever. Anyways, as you can see, their extensive catalog of work is very highly reviewed. Uh, people absolutely love it, but then the Maybe Man is this incredible exception to it. This is the album where things have finally turned around for them, you know? This this is where it gets real. This this is this is the different album here. I reviewed basically every single single from this. Starting off with I Won't. Uh yeah, everyone was like, this single's amazing. They've come back. This is every no. AGR show no growth as artists. Jack's attitude and disconnectivity with reality just got worse with every release. Stop this chicanery. That is my review of this uh single right here. And I stick with that. I find the song to be obnoxious and incredibly unlikable. And then, of course, they come out with a song that I think is possibly even worse. The DJ is crying for help, uh, which basically combines the quirky, annoying shit that we know from them uh, into this beautifully annoying package. Uh, and yeah, it's also got incredible commentary as well. But then the dumb song actually was good. Like, I ain't even going to lie. Like, this song was all right. Like, I had it stuck in my head for a bit, and I wasn't angry about it. You know, this this one actually, I, I thought the sound was better. This is one of the only, this might be the only AJR song that's ever even been in the yellow for me. All right, so if you want to talk about improvement, okay, boom. There you go, an actual improvement. I thought the dumb song was decent. And and you know what? The take wins where they are, okay? So if there's any hope for this album, it's that. And then there's God is Really Real, which is basically a, a song released after their father passed away. Immediately afterwards is a sort of uh, uh, existential venting session. Which, you know, sure, a lot of artists sort of born out of that. I didn't really like the song, per se, but yeah, I mean, it's one of the realer things that they've put out. Uh, but then they said the entire album was kind of based around this song, which didn't make any sense anyways. And then, the final single was Yes, I'm a Mess. When this came out, it had an average score of an 80. And I was like... Okay, maybe, just maybe, they put to no, no, this song is horrible. This song is absolutely terrible. I basically said, you guys tricked me in thinking this was going to be good. It wasn't good, not even a little bit. Uh, I'd say that it was possibly the worst single they've put out thus far. So, I, in other words, they've released, what, five? Is that five singles for this album? Yeah, five singles for this album. I've heard every single one of them. And it's very mixed so far, and it's only 12 songs in total. Another thing that's very concerning is the singles that I thought were ass aren't in the red, which is something I saw with the Blink-182 album, which tells me that, uh, one, it's either extremely inflated, which doesn't seem to be the case, or two, the real AJR haters have not gotten to it yet, which people are going to blame me for, uh, you know, for, for inciting. So, and there's and there's absolutely no way out of it, so whatever. I want you to understand that I don't think that I'm better than anybody else with listening to this album. However, I will say that the equipment I'm using is better than a ba basically everybody else who's rated this album, okay? These are $3,000 headphones, all right? If there is any chance of this album being good, all right, then these headphones are going to show that. All right, it's it's not my ears, it's not my extremely expensive, wonderful, incredible technology, okay? Uh, it's actually going to be the album. So with that being said, 
I got played with those $3,000 headphones. What if I told you that I actually feel like they're worth the money? Then what? Yeah, exactly. I've, I also have a couple of AJR sound bites. I'd like to play them all for you right now. Uh, first, we have this one. Oh my God. Jack, play that back. It's good. Uh, Jack, play that back. Uh, we have this. Yes, hello. I was wondering if you could play that song again. The one that goes... I'm going to pin this. Reminder to all album of the year-ers. If you're going to rate this album, listen uh, listen to it. Plus, come to your own opinion. Don't just control C, control V, Brad's opinion. Don't add fuel to the review bombing allegations. Thank you. That's actually very helpful. Do I have any more AGR sound bites? Oh, yeah, I have this one. I grew up on Disney, but this don't feel like Disney. All right, enough wasting time. So what's the worst that could happen? All right. What's the worst that could happen? Maybe man. Wish I was a stone so I couldn't feel. You'd yell in my face. It'd be no big deal. But Great. Starting off wishing that he was a stone so that he couldn't feel anything. Comparing himself to a rock and how he would rather be a rock than a human being. Incredible. Don't want to be stone. I changed my mind. I wish I had I. Oh, so now he doesn't want to be stone because, you know, it's called maybe man because he can't make up his mind. He's just like, maybe man. I wish I had eyes in the back of my head. Then I could see the places I've been. But then I went. I'm sorry, but like. Having eyes on the back of your head doesn't make it so you can see the places you've been. You're able to see that with the eyes on the front of your head. But then I would know that you're talking shit. I don't want to know what my friends think. This is great. It's called a metaphor, Jesus Christ, Brad. Oh, really? It's a metaphor that he wishes he had eyes on the back of his head so he could see that his friends are talking shit about him. That's deep. That's the deepest metaphor that's ever been said on the entire planet. Thanks for explaining that it's a metaphor to me. It's like we're back in the 21 Pilots days. It's a metaphor. All right, it's a metaphor, you guys. I wish I could act in a show on TV. Cause then I could practice not being me. <laughs> Believe me when I cry for real. <sighs> oh, private session. Oh, Jesus Christ, you saved my life there. These lyrics, bro, no, they are, it's mixed between melodramatic, self-pitying, pathetic, and then, like, now it's gonna turn into some grand orchestral bullshit on top of it, so. I wish that my brain would triple in size, I'd nail every joke, I'd win every fight, but I get too deep with that kind of mind, I don't wanna know the point of life in some other life. These lyrics are so bad, dude. Uh, this this is the the ultimate growth for AJR. They they've they've grown as artists. They, they, their commentary has become so much less quirky and actually legitimately deep. I get the sadder lyrics, but like it's like I wish my brain was three times the size so I'd nail every joke. It's like the dude is like drowning in insecurity, and then he's like a fish flopping on land trying to figure out a way of wording it. It's just uncomfortable to listen to. And it doesn't make for a fun experience. I, I would be rich. And then it's a pop song on top of it, so. If I was cocaine or a bottle of Jack, I get invited to every frat. But when you get old and your good days are past, you'll only want me when you're sad. Wow. That's so deep, dude. That's so incredibly deep. Listen, just because this first song is hot ass, all right, and a whole lot of deep metaphors that really, the more you think about them, the more ridiculous they are or what it's like um think about it like this it's like you have a 50 piece puzzle and you don't know what it is but when you put it all together it's like oh it's a ball of shit that's basically every single ajr metaphor so far on this song i wish i was big as big as my house i sleep on the trees i skip every crowd but i wouldn't fit on my therapist couch god i can really lose it now what does that even mean he wishes he was as big as his house so that he could sleep in trees, which doesn't make any sense. Because I'd imagine most trees are actually smaller than his house, or he'd just break them. But then he wouldn't be able to sit on his therapist's couch, which also makes no sense, because your therapist, you'd still manage to find a way to communicate with them regardless. I'm taking it too literally. Or maybe it's just literally garbage the more you think about it. And like, 
you the fact that I have to turn off my brain to enjoy these lyrics maybe is not a good sign. But if I was good, it get kind of weird. Cause it would only say what I wanna hear. And then you What are okay, I don't even know what's being said anymore because he's screeching and there's like an incredible amount of reverb on his voice. Oh, I thought he said if I was gay. I wish I was God, I'd never trip up, and if I did, well, so fucking what? I could be cruel and break over your stuff, and I'd be loved no matter what. But if I was God, it'd get kind of weird, because you would only say what I want to hear, and then you would die. You, and then you would die, you'd love me to death. I, I never knew who the hell I am. It's deep! I wish I was me, whoever that is. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Very appropriate drop right there. <sighs> Why, dude? Why? One, two, this is insane. This is completely insane, and I can't do this shit alone. I'm bringing back chat. Like, this is horrifically... Like, it's building up something very serious. And then it's like repeating this horrific garbage refrain. What? So pandemonium. And it's like screaming this shit. And it has like this ugly ass drop. Like. I, I can't be crazy. The drop is so random. That's literally it's. I'm only hating it for views. Yeah. Here we go again is right. This is not good. Drop could have been good. It's just so out of context. Oh, of course. No, context matters a lot in music. AJR just likes to take whatever context was built in any regard in their songs and just throw it in the garbage for some sort of surprise, like, expectation subverting garbage. And this song is just that again. Um, I know people really want this to be the album where AJR comes through and really changes everything. Uh, but I'm sorry to say that if this is telegraphing that, then we are off to a horrific start. Oh, wow. Wait, no, 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 no. Wrong button. Ignore that. That was the wrong button. Red headphones. Dog. <laughs> you didn't see that. Look, all right. Hey, it's the first. I just woke up. Okay, it's the wrong button. No, it's not a smiley ball. Hey, listen, all right, this has been a, no, no, it's been a big mistake, okay, big mistake, tell me that didn't sound like Onision, okay, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, all right, moving on, touchy-feely fool, here we go. I can't, I'm, Like, if you know anything about me, this song immediately is, like, the worst thing ever for me. Like, that, that kills me inside. Like, it actually kills me. Alright, hiding chat again, or people are gonna get upset that I'm inciting a riot. Because it's just creating a, a hive mind of sorts. But I knock on wood a lot. Praying I'll wake up tomorrow. Brad, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you love AJR with all your heart? Um, Hive Mind Reference, Conkadin, wow. Insurance Commercial Core. I like Hive Mind in the same way I like a co-worker. You know, they make my job easier. Um, however, it's, uh, it's a co-worker who I'm not going to invite to my house to play cards, you know? This sounds horrific. The sound is disgusting. The lyrics not as bad as the previous song, but what does it matter? This is not uh, a good sounding track. What is funny now? What? What? You said Hive Mind instead of AJR? <laughs> oh shit. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Look, it's not what it, I meant to say. AJR. I meant to say AJR. Listen, okay, this is a hey, 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 this is a big mistake. You guys know me. 
Okay? This, you guys, please, alright? No, this is not, this is not what it sounds like. Guys, you don't need to sell Brad coin, okay? This has some Simon and Garfunkel energy. Excuse me? I say you're too late. Got nothing in my brain. That's what people say. Ooh, ooh. that's what people say. Life is pretty Got nothing on my brain. Yeah, I know. It's... Oh, this song feels so empty. All right, hot take here. You guys might not like me for this. I'm going to show the chat for this hot take, all right? After re-listening to... Um, I listened to Taylor's version but of 19... What is it? 89, yeah. And I listened to the original. Crazy take. I used to hate Shake It Off. I don't think it's that bad anymore. Crazy? I don't think Shake It Off's a terrible song. I actually say it's kind of fun. All right? But it's crazy for me. I used to think it was like the worst thing ever. It's bad, but kind of good. Exactly. It's it's charming. Now your lawyer stuck to mine. Could you teach me to be ruthless? I'm happy to say that these headphones are doing their job. When a song is very well put together and it sounds fantastic, and you're able to pull you're able to pull stuff apart easily. All right, these are like the best headphones ever. When it sounds like a spacey gross like mess like this song does it basically enhances that and you know it re reaffirms that let me show you an example of where these headphones recently have been fantastic You can feel every single piece of the song uh, essentially being thrown at you in the exact right place at the right time. And it feels like it's a well-orchestrated, wonderful, and extremely well-curated like experience. This album, one of the best mixed albums I've ever heard in my life. So that's a great example for anyone who's curious. The difference, I know. Over, over-compressed like orchestra garbage dude I can't see how wow now i'll give this song one thing it ends off as a complete fucking mess leading into the next song yes i'm a mess which is probably the most hilariously unintentional like album sequencing uh like situation possible um I thought that that was um, terrible. I thought that it sounded awful. The lyrics were fine. Nothing really all that, you know, interesting to me. It's like, sure, a couple of eye squint moments, but I just thought the sin of that song is it just sounded awful. Dog. Exactly, and then it ends off with a Ron Browse feature. We need more bottles, tell my hurry up, tell them Ron Browse. I'm jumping out the window with this one, jumping out the window with this one, jumping out the window with this one, jumping out the window with this one. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Now, what I want everybody to do right now is... Next song, Yes, I'm a Mess, the song everybody loved that ended up being kind of ass. We the best music. DJ Khaled. Guess all of the friends that I pissed off all talked. They all talked. Ding. I guess my friends are not my friends. Hong Kong. That's basically an AJR song in general. Like, am I wrong? I guess my car, it will not start. Honk, honk. We gotta get you a slide whistle. Yeah, exactly. I guess I'm a little kid. Ribbit, ribbit. I think I'm getting you a slide. I'm gonna order you a slide whistle. Just join the stream. What are you listening to? 
What does this even mean? He's a mess with an S on his chest, meaning that he's, you know, he's a disaster, but he also is trying to save everybody. And I feel like the music reflects that because I feel like this song is an absolute disaster as well. Sure, it sounds slightly better than the previous song, um, but it's obnoxious and still completely overblown. Bung, bing, ding, Wake up! Bung, bung. Do I have any sound effects on my soundboard? I, I don't think I do. I just have a bunch of people saying stupid shit. Uh, oh, I have this. Guts when the sun comes up, but I guess that's what this is. Because it's like he likes himself like this. But then you see behind the curtain and he doesn't actually like himself, so it all just drops down. Or at least that's what I interpret from it, because that's, you know, might as well get something out of it for a ridiculous choice. But yeah, it turns into slow motion here. I'm jumping out the window with this one, jumping out the window with this one, jumping out the- That song is annoying. Just put it as simply as that. Does anything else even matter at that point? This is the dumb song. The last time I heard this song, I didn't hate it. Let's see if it's <laughs> The you are stupid command is so funny. You said with certainty, I may be the dumbest person that you've ever seen. So if that... I mean, the lyrics are still pretty bad, but like realistically, this is by far the best sounding AJR song with some like actual natural instrumentation, some really good mixing. The drum fills are pretty lit. Um, I'm actually bobbing along to this one. You know what? The quirkiness is kind of just a detail that sets it apart. This is one of those interesting situations where I feel like they actually managed to not completely fumble the bag here. Don't look at me. Yeah, these lyrics absolutely suck ass, dude. Is he enjoying it? This is, I mean, it's by far the best song. It's the one that's the easy, like the easiest to enjoy, but it's still not a great track. You make my lunch today. I would do it, but I couldn't work my microwave. Yo, hold on. See, you are fucked up. I am fucked up, but did you know that you are more fucked up than me, okay? For example, you wanted to make your lunch, okay? You, you grabbed your Lunchables, you unwrapped the plastic, but you had to call me in there to show you how to use a microwave, all right? I'm, I'm just saying, okay? And if you don't get that reference, all right, then, uh... <laughs> Kingdom what? <laughs> Kingdom come. Brad, I'm gonna be completely honest. I think this one's pretty solid. See, unlike every other AJR song, once I fall out of this song, it does enough to actually pick me back up into it. And it's one of the reasons why I'm able to say, oh, that's just Jack being quirky. Instead of, oh, you know, that's Jack being annoying and ruining the song that already was pretty bad. Um, I actually feel like this song comes together and it's a decent experience. And it's uh, proudly a, a shrug. I'd even say that it's a 51 out of 100. A 51 out of 100, okay? That's slightly better than a 50, all right? That means that I kind of a little bit enjoy this song, all right? Like, actually, best of the album. In fact, possibly the best AJR song in their entire discography, okay? You'll have to guess the lyrics for this one. This next song is called Inertia. <laughs> Oh, great. We're back to sampling old-school swing music. That always turns out well. I've worn the same skinny jeans since I was 15. <sighs> wow. 
Great lyrics, dude. It's probably nothing. Wow. I was going to save the planet, but today I've got plans. The social commentary is amazing here. By the guy who's apparently too dumb and doesn't look at the news, but still comments on the Israel-Palestine situation. Oh! Anyways, you know. You know what? This is actually a good time to remove the chat for the next five minutes. Still the overblown bubbly garbage they've been making for so long. My frustration isn't even at this song, because this is what I should expect, but it's like... For some reason, people are, like, saying this is, like, the biggest leap of quality ever. When in reality, they're just doing the same shit in a different toilet. Th like, there's not really much different here at all. You know, I actually kind of see what this song is going for and what they're trying to do with this track. I, I don't think that this song is completely detestable, and I do actually understand a bit what they're trying to say here with the whole inertia thing. Like, the whole momentum and, like, not wanting to stop things because there's already a, like, uh, uh, something set in motion with it, you know? I mean, sure, LOL, social commentary, but, like, you know, I actually kind of understand what this one is going for, and I do think that it has a bit more of a flow to it. I don't really like this song all that much, but I do think that there are things that are notably improved here that are worth mentioning. Yeah, it does sound like a fucking shitty bubblegum bounce fest. All right, but but still. It's like, even though what's being said, it's like, it's like the most, oh yeah, LOL, that's totally me. You know, I wanna go to the gym, but I also like eating and I'm lazy. Oh man, I want to move out, but packing is hard. It's like, yeah, wow. Look at these incredibly easy to relate to deep statements that I can relate to. Maybe the song isn't as bad as it actually is because of that, you know? It, it, because he's complaining in a way that sounds like uh, something I would complain about. What the fuck is this breakdown? I'm just happy people aren't being jerks to people who like this mu the music this time. Listen, please, if if you're not doing it, you know, for yourselves, at least do it for me. Like it it comes back to me. Pe like it 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 weighs on my shoulders when you're an asshole. You're making my life more difficult. So please. This breakdown is terrible. I'm sorry. So, uh, I don't know who. Was it E. Nunez who said this sounded like the, um... This sounds like, uh... This song. <laughs> Basically the same thing. Inertia has just as many missteps as it does anything of value. In fact, I'd say there's significantly more missteps. Music's like a table, okay? Usually when a song is bad, I like to compare it to a three-legged table. But this song I like to compare to a two-legged table, and I ain't talking about diagonal. I'm talking about two legs on the exact same side. This thing is a disaster. Red headphones. Dog At least if there's two legs diagonally, you can, like, balance it. There's no, there's nothing here that's balanced. It's a, it's literally a disaster. But hey, you know what? May, see, there's hope with this album. There's like specks of positive things that say, hey, this isn't the album, but maybe next album will finally be the time where AGR doesn't fuck it up. Turning out part three. Turning out is I think the song where this happens. I grew up on Disney, but this don't feel like Disney. Did my two years on Tinder, didn't I? Oh my god, he did his two years on Tinder and he still has no bitches? This is, this is a tragedy, dude. A travesty, if you will. To be wanted, suddenly I'm wanting more. I don't 
don't want this Am I missing something? Cause half the time I can't love right And I can't have sex and we both get quiet Boy, I must be one fucked up guy is this line correct? I'm confused what he means. Half the time I can't love right and I can't have sex and we both get quiet. Is he being very literal about how he can't have sex? Because he says, and I can't have sex and we both get quiet. I'm just, I wish that it made more sense as like a, a singular line. Like, am I missing something here? Is he talking about erectile dysfunction? Bro, that's what growing up on Disney does for you, okay? Unrealistic expectations about love and... You know, that's that's what this is all about. You guys just don't get it, okay? And as we know, you know, making a song about ED is the best way to make a song that's listenable. Oh my god, what a crazy night. It'll be fine. Quick, let's get married. Man, I wish we were 85 the rest of our lives when sounds sound so scary. Oh, I'm spiraling now. Let's get kids in the house, though I'm riddled with doubt. Is this how we turn out? Now... Maybe you haven't listened to AJR before and you've listened to, say, The Living Tombstone. I feel like The Living Tombstone does something very similar to AJR. Everything they say is extremely on the nose because they know what they're saying and doing is wrong, but they don't have the uh, inertia to change it. And so instead they make a song through their perspective of drowning under their problems and talking about the solutions with it. And as a result, you get a song where you're talking in multiple perspectives and it's really cringe. Because there is no mood to it. It just sounds like you're, once again, I'll say flopping like a fish out of water. I'd like to present an example of the living tombstone doing. Now, if you'll notice, I, I feel like this and AJR do have some very strong similarities of putting it very, like putting it on strong without any subtlety and sounding like a flopping dying fish is <laughs> still better than AJR. I will say the sound of this song I think is better, but you know, not by much. I have to go grab my phone to order food. And while I do so, I'd like to give you guys a gift. All right. A way out, if you will. A good song. A song way better than anything AGR has come out with. I am joking, but, you know, even though I think this song is kind of ass, it exudes confidence. And it's fun to listen to. Two things that listening to AGR will never give you. But it's not deep. Hey, I love how you laugh. Alone. You're human, so you have a bias, but you are very fair with your criticisms. Look, I'm not going to pretend I don't have a bias. Of course I have a bias. I don't like this kind of music in general. However, as you can see, there's 1,600 people watching, so people clearly care what I have to say about this album. And I've listened to all their albums. I've listened to literally all their music, so I'm curious to see how they continue evolving. The only people who have a problem with it are mad that I don't like it. think they had a dog. And I'm half yours and you're all mine Boy, I must be one fucked up guy Boy, I must be one fucked up guy Whoa, 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 whoa. Big dramatic what, what is it? Big dramatic Ex-ambassador size song about how what I did is wrong. He likes to randomly curse and ruin the mood. Oh, big time, dude. Like, you've heard me. I've talked about awkward profanity, and I am someone who does personally believe that if you swear in a song out of literally nowhere and it changes the mood, then it matters. Like, cursing is, like, like it's not something that is just, like, worth completely ignoring, especially in a song like this. Listen, when I listen to hip-hop, I usually don't give a shit. 
All right. There are, of course, still instances like, you know, where I'm listening to a hip hop song and then it's like, you know. I'm one of a kind, girl. You can't find nobody else like me. Yeah. You were out of your mind, girl. Cause I'm that n You know, and then something will just happen. I'll be like, huh? You know, I'll be like, excuse me? Or, you know, maybe another instance like this. Wait, can I really sit in one of my... Swearing is, exactly, it's a powerful tool, and AGR just doesn't understand that, and they very awkwardly will throw around curse words that will change the mood and make things more mature, when in reality, it actually makes it feel extremely immature, and, uh, like they can't control themselves, or like they need to resort to these cheap tactics in order to make you feel something throughout a song instead of actually, you know, having something actually that you can connect to. Oh, I'm spiraling now, let's get kids in a house. By the way, you may think that he's like 40 years old with a song like this. He's actually 26. He's actually 26 years old making a song about how he's freaking out and he needs to get married with someone right now and have kids in a house. Think it one day at a time. What growing up sheltered does to a motherfucker. Oh, please. Have you seen Born and Bred? <laughs> Born and Bred. Born and Bred? Is that what it's called? I called it... I, I made a joke. I said more like Born with Bread. Because, yeah, this... Bro, this this is the original AJR album right here. All right? <laughs> if you've ever heard this album, it'll it'll tell you a lot without saying a word. All right? I'll just say that. Bad of the days, you got some ones to do life with. Don't overthink it. It's not fucking science. Bad. Oh my god, don't overthink it. It's not fucking science. Wow, great message and a horrific way of going about it and getting to it that just felt incredibly awkward. Now, let me talk about my own life and my own experiences here. There's something very real about what he's saying. I've experienced the realest of real love. And it doesn't hit you like a truck. In fact, I'd say the way it hit me was more like, Oh, I like being around this person. Hold on. I really like being around this person. You know, there wasn't really that incredible magic Disney-like spark. But it's somebody who I've just slowly become more and more connected with. And wow, I really like this person. I want to spend the rest of my life with them. All right? That has been my experience. And with Jack, he's expecting that big boom, that big spark, like it needs to be a drug, and oh my god, he's not getting that, so it must be wrong, and now he's running around like a chicken with his head cut off, and making a song at the end here with a message about how he shouldn't do that, in which we know there's already going to be a turning out for part four where he does that, because that's literally been what's happened the last two parts, so why is there even a third fucking part in the first place? Dog. Plus the song is boring. Oh, it's Ryan? Oh. Anyways. Doesn't change my point. Yeah, most importantly, it's boring. Ryan singing. Wait, how old is Ryan? <gasps> Ryan's 29. Oh, shit. I went to Vegas. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys this story. It's a good story, all right? I went to Vegas. And I saw someone, and I had to do a double take. I swear, he looked exactly like this, but like 20 years, or like, sorry, 10 years younger. All right, and, and I'd like, I told, I was with Tina, I was like, does he kind of look like the AJR guy? And she was like, wait, and she was like, wait, he does. All right, I swear to God, it was someone who looked exactly like him, but wasn't him because he was too young. So, you know, are you telling me AJR has multiple lead singers and they're literally indistinguishable? Maybe. Next song is called uh, Hole in the Bottom of My Brain. Oh, wow, these sound effects are great, you know? Just forget that the best song has been the dumb song where it puts all that shit behind it. Let's just continue to make the most annoying sounds imaginable. <laughs> Lobotomy type beat. There's a hole in the bottom of my brain, but when I party, the hole goes away. Ah, oh, back to great writing. Party up rock needs a picture to post so the world knows the party was great. There's a hole in the bottom of my brain. So there's likes and hellos on a post on my phone of a party I throw in the hole in the bottom of my brain. Let's just say, let's just say we're fine. Wake me up when September ends. Start to explode if I go. 
it sounds exactly like scaled and icy. You're right, it kind of does. There's a hole in the bottom of my brain. Take money, the hole goes away. I see, there's a hole in the bottom of my brain. So this song, I guess, is about how, you know, there's an empty part of him that gets filled up by uh, various things. Like here he's saying, uh, when you love me, the hole goes away. And the likes on my phone, they'll start to explode. If I go to L uh, to explode in LA, there's a hole in the bottom of my brain. If I make money, the hole goes away. Now there's a thing made of gold in a home that I own from a song that I wrote about likes and hellos on a post from my phone of a party I throw. That is probably the most convoluted, empty, and sad flex that has ever been made. In the hole in the bottom of my brain. Maybe it's a song about, oh, why I'm weak. And what's wrong with that? Boy, oh boy, I love it when I fall for that. I'm weak. Ay, ay, ay. The one that goes. Ay. Will I do a cover of the song like Chafed and Ashy? Listen to the first song that, uh, of, uh, here. Tell me this doesn't sound like the opener to, um, Scaled and Icy. <laughs> Sounds like Thneedville. Wait, you're right. It literally is. Yeah. Dr. Seuss core. Something like that. There, when you get famous, the hole goes away. Now there's coke on the nose of a bro I don't know in a show. We'll wear clothes that were fancily sewn in a town that I loathe on the coast that gets stoked on the thing made of gold in a home that I own from the song that I wrote about likes and hellos on a post on my phone at a party I throw, but I know I'm alone. I know I'm alone in the hole in the bottom of my brain. It's like, once again, the Incredible 21 Pilots approach of the most cheery, needville sounding ass song with the most downer, just distraught and annoyingly depressive lyrics that are extremely convoluted in execution with a t tight little, whoop, that's the message at the end there. Um, I don't find it fun to listen to. I don't find it like it. I, I don't think it evokes anything mentally either for me. It's just, I don't like it. Now we got the great singles coming up. The DJ is crying for help. Hired, hired, can I get hired? I got no skills except getting DJ is crying for help. DJ is crying for help. Sitting through Jack Met trying to make a point in a song is kind of like dying, honestly. Oh, especially when it's this horribly executed. Coming back to the DJ is crying for help, like that fucking means anything, and this whole song is just leading up to that really tacky violin combined with these deep kicks that just doesn't work at all. DJ Bring him in, Khaled! Bring him in! Bring him in, Khaled! Wait until the party starts. You see, Brad, it's a contradiction because of how happy it sounds, but the lyrics are so down. Thanks for bringing up trauma.
He got through all the features. DJ Khaled was the only thing that made that song tolerable. Red headphones. Dog. What's sad is I can really tell they're trying, but it doesn't make it better. It hurts. It's it's not fun. It's not fun to say I don't like this song when they clearly put 110 percent into making this pile of crap. Next is the next big single. I won't. Put your hands up, cause I won't. So this was the big quirky single that opened up the whole album cycle. Um, needless to say, it still is annoying, on the nose, and sour, as, you know, a lot of their previous material was. Literally dance monkey. This whole album is complaining. I know. It's complaining. It's commentary. The only thing I can give it is I actually think that the song structures of this album make a lot more sense than any previous project, but I still think the songs themselves are overblown crap. And now I look impressive just like my friends. Bring dum ding to ching. See, if this song wasn't so sour and annoying, it would be one of the better AGR songs. Because I think it actually has a relatively catchy chorus, but it actually turns negative because I find the Get your hands up cause I won't I don't subscribe to the hype anymore situation is just so fucking obnoxious. Man, I hate being sober. I'm a smoker. Uh, 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 man, I hate being sober. I'm a smoker. I'm a smoker. I'm a smoker. I'm a smoker. i <laughs> Anyways, not a fan of that song. Uh, wait. So I'm listening to Kendrick, bro. I, he says so. I'm listening to Kendrick. It's ten out of ten. I'm telling you. I'm feeling. Okay. He listens to Kendrick Lamar, guys. Couldn't you tell from the music and the deep messages? You know, the only difference between AJR and Kendrick Lamar is I feel like Kendrick might have a little bit more weight in, uh, you know, making commentary because, you know, he grew up in a horrible area where, you know, like it literally you had to fight to survive. But of course, you know, AJR being born and bred uh to be successful uh trust fund babies you know they 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 could easily do what he does for sure anyways uh i want his ass Dog. had potential to be good but it's not steve's going to london whatever the fuck that means steve's going to london sean stuck in a suit steve da 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 Wait, what's the song I'm thinking of that does that? Sweet Caroline. It is. Yeah. Amazing song, by the way. Sweet Caroline. Womp, womp, womp. What you got? What you got? Do what you got to say. Tensions is definitely rising. Wow, you know what I love? Songs that directly say that they're completely meaningless and yet you should still pay attention and not turn them off. While you try to find meaning in your life before you're gone, there's a song that doesn't mean anything at all and it goes like, and then play the chorus. You know another song that does that? You know another song that graciously does this? There's gotta be a truck, there's gotta be a girl She's gotta be hot and you gotta run the shit with world Checking and it goes like this Baby, what you think of 
way I'm getting out of here. Whoa, whoa, you already know how we go. Say the radio song. Fuck. <laughs> Basically the same concept. In the book, Tom fell for his best friend's mom. You know what's a good way of making me care about a song? Telling me that it literally means nothing, so there's no reason to pay attention. And especially when it's a song that's five minutes long, also. Wait a minute, this synth. I've heard this synth before. Aphex Twin? Wait, it might actually be. What's the song? It's the Aphex Twin song. You guys know what it is. I swear to God, it's off the um, Richard Dawson Jr. one. You hear it, right? Brett has a song recognition skill better than Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> but the name retention skill of a Starbucks barista? Wait, that's so real. Why is that the real- Wait, that's literally you just defined me as a human being right there. And that's a her face! I mean, to be fair, nothing in this song mattered anyways. Gang! Gang! I used to I sell crack to, to children. I used to so throw so all of my money right off the building. I am smart, yeah. I'm so smart, I can make Donda. And I pull up in the house with the gray Honda. Yeah, uh, I pray yonder that AJR maybe comes through with something that's a bit longer and maybe a bit better. And maybe that doesn't make me wanna, I don't know, I've run out of rhymes, damn it. I used to be better at this, I swear. We the best. Try hard to write a cool song So I start with something simple like trying to put my shoes on Now something kinda clicked, cause you relate a bit But no one's gonna care about a shoe song I try hard to write a cool song But I gotta make it matter so maybe I'll throw the news It's gotta be a truck It's gotta be a girl It's gotta be something And it's gotta rhyme with world And it can't be too long But it can't be too short I gotta make it quick or I lose my record deal 2022 Or maybe an election down in Tucson <laughs> This idiot spelt Tucson wrong There's a C in it Try throwing something cool on So I'm listening to Kendrick and playing the swimming pool song Beep beep boop 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 Social reference Ba 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 Beep oh, Why did I do that? Cause now I hate my track I'm quite aware I'll never write a cool song Oh no, why did I play Kendrick Lamar? Oh man, I wanna make a cool song but Oh, Kendrick Lamar just shows me I'll never be as good as Kendrick Lamar I have to Make- I have to be Kendrick Lamar. Doesn't this whole thing just make you go- ah! <laughs> ah! And I came up straight up from the block I watched my grandpa say penis There's so many better melodies, why do you need a new one? So stop writing a song about writing- You're losing their attention, buddy. Move on. It's great. He's going on about how difficult it is to write music because he doubts himself as an artist. And guess what? I heard a song that did this right recently. That was like just a viewer of the channel who made a song like this where it actually was like a really serious and interesting dive into their own psyche and didn't just sound like I'm too privileged to make something deep and meaningful. Because that's what this sounds like to me. That song was really stupid. I didn't like it at all. In fact, I'd say it's probably oh. my least favorite song because it's a... Uh, it's like it's trying to be the Seinfeld of songs without realizing that what made Seinfeld interesting is not just that it's about nothing, but it's interesting characters, you know, being human beings in an environment that isn't about... that's about nothing. So it still is something. Instead, rather, this is just the equivalent of the sound, uh, Seinfeld sound effects, you know, and trying to put something deep over it. 
Finally, God is Really Real. This is the only song of this album that might actually matter in any regard. Uh, this was a song written when their uh, father was bed uh, written. And I'll tell you what, because I don't trust chat, I'm actually going to hide it here. I just don't have the patience to deal with. So, you know, don't worry. This is the only song where it's actually something serious. My dad can't get out of bed. God is really real when you really, really need him. I'm showing the chat again. Listen, you have this incredibly emotional song, and then it's just, F You know? What a d Like, great. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like this whole thing. No, and, and here's the thing. It's real shit. But it's like, why? You know? It's not like this was off the cuff. This was written down and performed this way. To make it like, like, oh, I'm gonna say fuck to make it more dramatic. And instead what it does is just like makes it feel like it's trying too hard on something that throughout the entire beginning of this song already was emotionally pulling me in. And then it's like, it's like, dude, extra syllables. Yeah. There's robots that are way too good at art. Social commentary, and then making it about something that is completely irrelevant. Man, you notice how robots are good at art nowadays? <laughs> oh boy, you know? Society, am I right? Now, and trying to get to Mars. Stops fucking long till it stops. I love you sounds all corny, so I wrote this song instead. I'll sing. I actually disagree with the point about the cursing. I think it works because it conveys how facing our death. Here's the problem is I, I get what you're saying with this. Life's fucking real till it stops. And God's fucking real till he's not. It would work a lot better if it wasn't following this very simple linear way of like a melody that completely feels co entirely calculated to still make it feel like a song. There is nothing loose about it. It is something that I think could have been completely disregarded out of the song and changed literally nothing. I, I don't think it enhances. I think it's an actual misstep here because of everything else around it. It's just like, it, the, the song is like, da, 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 da. It just sounds literally like, on a song that's like genuinely so fucking serious, you know? It's like, oh, whatever, dude. Sing for you when you're out of bed. This is by far the most serious song. It's tragic what ended up happening. And it sucks that I have to give it a score here because I avoided giving it a score before because I don't like the song. I think that is real what happened. I think that this is possibly the deepest that they've do like that Jack has dove in in order to make something like this. Um, but I think the song sucks. Like, I, I think that the actual way that it's put together shows that they don't really understand how to put together a song that works. Like, even at what what feels like the most tragic moments, it's just a failure because it doesn't work emotionally. It doesn't translate to me. There are still moments here that work. Don't get me wrong. I just think that the whole thing as a full experience is depressing, but not exactly for the reason it's supposed to be. Dog. And it hurts. This is one of the most cruel and difficult reviews I've given for a song. Um, but I do mean what I say here. I don't like how the song is executed. And it's just about me giving my personal opinion on it. And I'm glad that a lot of people were able to connect with it. There are moments with this song that I do connect with. But I just don't think that... Uh, I just don't like how it's done. Here we go. 2085. <laughs> Jesus, my ears. Somebody told me I got a 40. I would have spent my time in bed. Writing my dumb songs and my growing up songs. I should have just grown up instead. Wow. If someone told me I'd die at 40, instead of making all these songs about how I should do better, I'd just do better. It's almost like you can apply this to your life now instead of continuing to do it in yet another fucking album. And then maybe make something that's worthwhile listening to. It's like, wow, what a profound statement. 
It's so self-aware, and yet the same shitty cycle is just going to continue and keep fucking happening. If I would have kissed her, how different would life be right now? Bro, you know what I'm saying? I grew up on Disney, but this don't feel like Disney. Oh man, that Disney kiss. It would have changed everything. That would have changed the world right there. Man, if only I kissed the girl. I just try to suck it, child, but it ain't mine though. For all that shit, whatever. Hey. Ugh, more awkward cursing. Hey, it's 2085, we're old as shit, whatever. Hey, I'd hate to have to die for I get my head together, whatever. That's the entire chorus. You wanna know what brings me joy? Let me tell you what brings me joy. Music that isn't just talking about dying and wanting to die and being completely incapable of doing basic things and making songs about it instead of dealing with it in the most infuriating way possible. You know what makes me happy? Good music. Let me show you a good song. I've been uh, very obsessed with this re uh, album recently. I gave uh, Jockstrap a hard time when people were trying to share it with me, but I ended up uh, coming around on this entire project. They did they use a baby noise for the background? Yes, they did. Bleh, bleh. All right, but you know who else does that? Okay. Oh my God. Jack, play that back. Oh my God, Jack, play that baby scream again. Hello. The one that goes. Ah! The same shit, except for here. It actually is like an interesting, weird, and obscure loop that gives the song personality that isn't completely defined by it either because the rest of the song is brilliantly mixed, interesting lyrically, tons of new ideas constantly put in the mix, the EQ is fantastic, everything is placed well, and it actually is fun to listen to. And it also has a melancholy feel to the entire thing too. Whatever, let's go back to AJR and their incredible social commentary about the world and how lol we're dying. Some feels like it's meant to be just one giant waste of time. That's what it feels like. It's one of those albums that at least like, see, I, I hated their previous effort, okay? But at least that, like, felt like something by the end of it. You know what I mean? I genuinely feel like like half these songs are just, like, doomer garbage. Feeling like it's just, what's the point in anything, you know? And it's just so boring. Did I make you proud? Did I screw this up? Hey. I think uh, it being doomer garbage is annoying as hell coming from successful artists. Oh, of course, who are... Re referencing their success and saying, I'm successful, but look at me, I'm still sad and making songs about how I'm sad and successful and not making a single fucking change to my life every single song and album and just the cycles repeating and you listening to this is feeding into that and you're a part of the problem now. Congratulations, you listened to the song. It's depressing. It feels pointless. It's like, why am I even fucking bothering? Your damage incoming. Nate Rose is in the back. Brad, why do you have no tolerance for depressive music? Literally some of my favorite music is like some of the most dark and depressing shit you'll ever hear in your entire life. And you know what the difference is? It really fucking sounds like it. You know? It actually takes you there. It feels like true, real, full panoramic expression. Not... I'm sad, I'm mad, and it's your fault because I'm rich and I wipe my ass with hundred dollar bills. 
This sounds like Sesame Street exploiting paranoid schizophrenia. Bro, Mart is on a streak here with bars. As someone with depression, if I want to listen to music that conveys that feeling, this is not what I go to. This just makes me miserable. Do you think that music can be depressing without taking you there, but this is just not it? Because I mean, of course, like you could just be obvious about it and reference Radiohead, you know? Oh my God. Like what, my most listened to album, it might have been 2020 or 2021, was literally Moonshake Pool. All right. And I would listen to that album and I would feel like garbage. But it's great music. All right. And it does a lot of stuff right. It brings me down, but there's something very uh, cathartic about it at the same time. There's no catharsis. There's no solution here. It's just dragging me down. It's like, here's, let's, let's put you in the same shitty shoes that I'm in and give you absolutely nothing to leave it with. Oh yeah, After Laughter by Paramore did it so well because it felt like they were taking extremely negative feelings and actually like redefining them through like, music that felt like it had a pulse and it actually felt like it cleansed it in such a pure real and like a respectable way there was like still like very clear powerful emotions throughout that entire album listening to jack melancholically sing that this entire album has just been a just a fucking bummer dude hey i'll be whatever makes you a fan because i don't know who the hell i am i think it's too late to figure this out if i could be me i would have been it by now Maybe. like i'm sorry but like I rest my case. Do you hear this shit? I wish I was me. Whoever that is. I could just be and not give a shit. Hey, I'll be whatever makes you a fan. Cause I don't know who the hell I am. I think it's too late to figure this out. I, uh, if I could be me, I would have by now. Maybe I'm stone or as big as my house. Looks like our time is running out. It's like, wow, dude, what a, what a fantastic way to end this. Just, I, nothing matters. Running out. Oh, pathetic is a great, yeah, it's very pathetic. Oh, if this is me, then I'll do my best. That's a good way of putting it. And you know what? It even ends like a Radiohead album with a single piano key. Anyways, that album, th that, that sucked ass. Like, that was just so miserable. Like, what a miserable and horrible way to end this. Like, seriously. I think it's a decent closer. I think it's about as, like, pathetic and as much of a giving up as you possibly can for closing, off, closing out. Like, seriously. And it sounds like ass. Is it their worst? No, actually, this is AJR's best album. Okay, I think so. I think it's their best album. I'm feeling a strong one to a light two. No, I don't think that they've improved overall. I think that there's things about this album that make it partially the worst of their albums. Um... I, I find it to be thoroughly unenjoyable. A couple of highlights, and actually basically one highlight in this entire thing, and it is basically just misery throughout the rest of it, uh, feeling like I am being dragged down to their level the entire time. That's it. Um, yeah, so overall, not a, good, not a good listen. A very miserable, depressive, painful listen. Um, and that's about all I got. Rest in peace, the user score. Please listen to this album on your own without the video before giving it a score. Like, realistically, like, sure, you've probably heard enough throughout this video, but, like, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, you could be missing out on something, the big picture. I'm just a sour, sour guy who's listening to an album that's designed to make me feel miserable, and I just don't fuck with it. Anyways, you guys, see you later.